We've teamed up with Vitality with their ambassador, the one and only, my former teammate, Mauro Toji. Let's get inside. He's waiting. He's waiting for me. Can you believe it? I don't know who the star of the show is. Jim, what, what time do you call this? It's, yeah, what I've, had to, I've you kept you waiting. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. How are you doing? Long time no see. I know, how do I look? I see you got, you got my name tattooed on your... Yeah, we played together, didn't we, in 2016. <laughs> Three games, so I did. I went down that route. So, George and Mauro, George Cruz. <laughs> there we go, there it is. They actually looked really cool when I got them done in New York. Right, Mauro, it's been a while. A lot has changed in my life, but more so your life. How are things? Has it been a whirlwind few years? Yeah, things, things are all right, things are good. Definitely been a few years since we've been playing together. <laughs> uh, but all in all, you know, things, things are good. I can't complain with how, with how life is. Mm. Yeah, like this time during the pandemic, people have spoken about reflection. Have you reflected on what you've done so far in the game, like where you are, where your profile is? For me, it was a massive period of reflection. That first lockdown like, allowed me the time and space to actually like, look back and take stock of where I actually am, which was probably the first time in my career that I actually did that because when I was a kid coming up through the academy, I would have absolutely loved to be in the position I am now, so it definitely made me grateful for it. So, we're going to look back down memory lane. I just want to show you some pictures and tell me what kind of memories these spark. Yeah, yeah. So this was uh, the prep school, which I actually don't live too far from this place now that I went to for a number of years. This was actually the first time I was introduced to the idea of rugby. I remember England won the World Cup in 2003 and I don't come from a household that necessarily like, has a history of rugby. So it wasn't really in my consciousness. And I remember coming into school and seeing that England won the World Cup and be like, oh, okay, that's cool. And just go on with my day, like not thinking anything of it. And then why rugby then? The headmaster of that school um, was a man called Floyd Stedman, who was a former Saracens captain. He told me that when I go to secondary school, I should try and play some rugby. At that age, I didn't know any of the rules. I was offside all the time. Some say I'm still out now. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just getting in before you do. Yeah. I was obviously the big guy, taller than everyone, um, had a bit of an athletic advantage, but I enjoyed it. For me, it was, it was a way to socialize, like try and get into a new environment, etc., etc. And we just slowly started to build from there. Well, I don't know if you can see that. It isn't that old a picture, but it's. Uh... It's not in HD. Yeah, so I think that's that must be my year seven rugby team. If me, with my eyes just closed in the middle, very humble haircut. <laughs> that is, as you said, that was the foundation of my like rugby journey. You know, this was my first introduction to rugby with the heavy sweater rugby shirts and the incredibly muddy pictures. Yeah, so this was at Harrow. I had some, I had two very good years at Harrow, and I enjoyed it. I think Harrow was the perfect step for me at that point in my life because it allowed me to improve in my rugby, allowed me to train, but it also allowed me to take a step forward as well with the, my academic endeavours. So at that point, Maro, did you know that there was an opportunity, there was an avenue to become a professional rugby player? Yeah, so I think at that point I started seeing people who were a year or two above me start to get contracts and people that you know you may have played with or trained with start getting contracts so then it starts to feel like very real it just starts to feel that now nah, this isn't something that's ridiculous this isn't something that's out of touch it's a nice photo that's my wonderful mother my big brother jeremy and uh, that handsome boy on the right is a young maritoja we have a lot of family back in Nigeria, and my parents, they, they like to entertain, so it was, um, it was always busy. And for a large part of my life, I was a secretary for, for my mum. I'd answer the phone, say, oh, mommy, Auntie Lissy wants to speak to you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's speak about what? Um, oh, I don't even know. My mum could speak on the phone for hours. 
You mentioned your brother. Um, Ty, you and your brother? Yeah, we still live together. He lives with me. We shared rooms as a child growing up up until about, probably about 16 or so. So yeah, we, we, we are tight. I was down in New Zealand for this tour and I think that might have been, it might have been just before where the, whoa, Jim, Hamaro, we told you, where the song came out. And I remember seeing visuals of your dad singing the song, right? <laughs> Did he speak about that experience? My dad absolutely loves it. So I don't come from a traditional rugby family, but now my parents, their whole calendar is around rugby. So they want to travel, they want to be there, they want to support. Um, they love they love the atmosphere. I had my whole family, my whole nuclear family there. So it was a special time. I think my dad thinks I'm more famous than I actually am there. Because my dad was like, Ma, look, like, you have to stop using like public transport, it's not safe. <laughs> I was like, Dad, I think I'll be alright, to be honest. I think I'll be okay. Ma, I'm serious. I don't want you to use public transport. I was like, trust me, I'm, I'll be okay. <laughs>